Okay, next one we're gonna do is the delta to y uh, connection here. Okay, so we're gonna be doing the low voltage connection, meaning that we're going to be doing uh, the parallel connection. So I'm just gonna copy and paste here because my delta is gonna be identical and then we'll see that the y is gonna be different. Okay, so now we're gonna do the y secondary. So you can see here that if you're doing one project and the next in the shop class, it looks like the primary can be left the same, right? So we have a delta primary, so leave it exactly the same. So I've got the exact same diagram here, A to B, B to C, C back to A, two eight volts on the line, two eight volts on the phase. A to B, B to C, C back to A, two eight volts on the line, two eight volts on the phase there, okay? Be careful, because this one has been, we've been provided with a neutral here, but we don't need to make use of that because we have three wires coming in. We are gonna make use of the neutral on the secondary, um, but on the primary, we do not need a neutral. So let's do our diagram here for the low voltage connection of the Y. So that means that we're going to have a parallel connection between the windings here. Okay, hopefully you are seeing the pattern here and that hopefully by the end of the entire video, you'd be able to do any of these diagrams. And if you're studying for the, the final test, your final test is gonna be weeks from the time that you actually do this project. So there'll be a little bit of loss in the memory or your memory of this. So go back to this one more time prior to doing your final test. But shouldn't be that bad because um, we're kind of solidifying it here, right? So at this point, we're grabbing line one, line two, and line three, again, from those outer points. So that's line one, line two, and line three. And if you wanted to, you could put uh, the A, B, and C. There we go. Uh, so let's take a look at um, the labels here. So this one would be X1. The other side of that winding is X2. And we know that X3 and X1 have the same instantaneous polarity. Sorry, I had a brain fart there. And that's because H1 and X1 have the same polarity and that X1 and X3 have the same instantaneous polarity. Beautiful. Okay, so we'll do the same thing all the way around, right? We got, um, we've got X1 and X3, X4 over here, and X2 here. X1 and X3, and then we've got X2 and X4. Beautiful, okay? I may have mixed up like the placement of right or left on this parallel circuit, but essentially we have the same polarities on each of them, so we should be good to go. Now, when I put two eight volts to the primary here, I'm going to have 120 volts on the secondary because the ratio of this transformer has not changed. The ratio was 1.73 to one with the number of turns on the primary versus the number of turns on the secondary. So that means that the voltage from a line to a neutral point, right? So this point right here um, would be brought out to the neutral, right? And oftentimes that is bonded to ground. So this voltage would then be 120 volts And is that our phase or our line voltage? Well, that's inside the circuit. So that is gonna be a phase value, right? Any value that's here on the inside of the transformer is going to be a phase value. So we have 120 volts on the phase, okay? Here for the delta, we have V line equals to V phase. Whereas for a Y circuit, V line is equal to V phase times root three. Okay, don't get messed up. The ratio from primary to secondary is also root three. It's 1.73 to one. That has nothing to do with three phase. That's to do with the number of turns here versus the number of turns here. Two eight in here, 120 volt out here. For any Y connections, this is definitely gonna hold true. So V line is equal to V phase times root three. If we take our calculator, we multiply 120 times root three, then our outgoing voltage on the secondary there is going to be 208 volts. 
Okay, and that's going to be our line voltage. And again, we'd have, I don't have enough room, but we'd have that 2, 8 from line 1 to line 3. Anywhere from a line to a neutral connection is going to be 120 volts. That's going to be our phase voltage there. Okay, if, it has, it's not, if it's not clicking in yet or you're not understanding it, it will make sense as we keep going through the diagrams and as you keep going through this and your calculations in theory class. Okay, beautiful. So now we've got, I think, everything that we need for that diagram. So let's use that to uh, complete our diagram below. So it looks like X1 and X3 are going to be tied together. So let's do that. So X1 and X3. So you can see the pattern. It's exactly the same diagrams as we did before, right? In terms of the series or the parallel for the high or low connections. Okay, this is our low connection, so we're putting those guys in parallel. Uh, and for here, we need to, let's make this a little bit smaller. We need to now bring uh, that X1 and X3, and that's going to feed line one. So that's gonna come down and feed this guy. Okay, X2 and X4 are going to feed our neutral. So that bad boy is gonna come all the way down to the neutral there. Okay, for our second transformer, X1 and X3, for transformer number two, is then going to feed the, the B phase, or the B line, I guess. Uh, so let's do that. So this guy is going to come down and feed this bus right here. Okay, then it's a matter of like like how clean you want to make your, uh, your diagram. So this one is definitely coming down to the neutral, right? So it's fine if you want to bring this X4 down to there. It's essentially where it's going. Um, it's also like tying into here, right? So it's up to you how you want to do your diagrams. So for this one right here, this X4, right? It's going down and it's feeding the neutral there, but it's also coming over here and it's gonna tie into here. So it gets a little bit messy, right? So it's up to you how you wanna do your diagram. And it ties into there as well. So all the fours are brought together and that's brought to the neutral. And then again, out in the field, the neutral is bonded to ground. Okay, so we need one final connection there, and that would be for the third transformer. So X1 and X3 feed the C line. Beautiful. So 1 and 3 feed each of our lines, and then the 4s are all brought together to this main point right here. Okay, and then that's bonded to ground, usually out in the field. So our output values here, uh, we would have on the output here, we would have 2, 8 on the line, 2, 8 on this line, and between A and C, we're also going to see 208. And then from any line to neutral, we're going to have 120 volts, and that's going to be our phase voltage. So we have 2, 8 volts, 3 phase going in, and we have um, 2, 8 volts on the line value, and we have 120 volts on the phase value. Right, and this 2 8 is a three phase value there. Okay, so 2 8 in, 2 8 out, but now we've put the neutral there or the star point, and that provides us with another voltage, which is root 3 less than the line voltage that came in there. Okay, that's our standard connections for the del delta to y. It's just normally out in the field, you wouldn't have double windings on the secondary there. Okay, so we'll leave it there. You can pause it there and make sure you've got all the uh, the values for here. So we've put all the connections in, we've put all our line voltages, our phase voltages, and we've marked out all of our terminal designations as well. Next one is the delta to I, but now we're going for the high voltage. So our delta primary stays identical there. Okay, let's zoom in a touch here. So primary is exactly the same, 2, 8 in, and we've got 2, 8 volts on the phase there. On the secondary, uh, we're now going to series up the windings. So again, the speed will increase to here because we all know what we're doing. I've said the th same thing three times now. So let's quickly finish this bad boy off and move on. And again, in your shop class, the instructor will be asking for either the high or the low connection there. And you should be able to do both, right? 
like the it's not without with outside of the realm of possibilities that a shop teacher comes over and says okay beauty you've done all all those connections that we've asked for in the shop manual um, before we move on show me this connection and they'll leave you for 10 minutes and come back to see whether you can create the the opposite connection of what you just did okay so um that means that if we have two eight there then we've got 120 volts on each of these guys okay those are uh, phase values there so that means that there's 120 volts on each of these guys but remember that we've created a series connection and so those guys are going to sum to give us our phase value from line to neutral right so if we wanted to bring our neutral out and again this would be bonded to ground okay then uh, our line to neutral voltage there would be 120 plus the 120 so this is actually going to be 240 volts on the phase from line to neutral if we take that 240 and we multiply it by root 3 because our line voltage is our phase voltage times root 3 then we're going to have a disgusting 416 volts on the line here okay and again between line 1 and line 3 we're also going to have 416 volts so be careful if this is one of the ones that they're asking you to do in the shop manual make sure that your hands are not in that circuit that you're just using the touch safe leads to go to the meter because you're going to have 240 volts between line and neutral and between any of the lines you're going to have root three higher or 416 volts finishing this diagram off i neglected to put in the x2 x3 and x4 so all of our fours are tying together two and three are creating that series connection And then we're going to use this diagram right here in order to complete the diagram below. Okay, so let's start off by uh, creating a series connection between X2 and X3. Okay, all of our fours are going to uh, join together. So let's do that with maybe a green conductor there. So this four right here is going to come down and feed the neutral and that is going to be bonded to ground okay again you don't have to bond that to ground in the shop because we don't have any loading on the secondary there so it's not going to change anything with your voltages okay in order to finish off the rest of the diagram we're going to have uh, x1 feeding line one so the first transformer second transformer and third transformer so first transformer x1 feeds line one second transformer x1 feeds line two and third transformer x1 feeds line three and then we can throw in the last connection there i've neglected to do the uh, other connections for the x4s So all of our X4s are going to tie together. Beautiful. Depends on how you want to do the diagram. Whether you want to bring them all down to the neutral, we know that we would have one single connection to the neutral out in the field there. Okay, let's finalize with uh, voltages here. So we saw that uh, the voltage between line to line is going to be 240 volts no line to line is going to be 416 wake up Pete 416 volts and this guy is 416 volts and these guys A to C 416 volts that's because our voltage from any line to the neutral is now 240 volts and that's a phase value so if we go from any line to the neutral we pick up 120 we pick up 120 and that gives us our 240 from line to neutral if we go between any line to line then we go from here pick up 
240. Come over here and then pick up 240 again before we get to that middle point there. Okay, so that's going to be uh, the relationship on the line value is going to be 240 volts times root 3. Okay, it looks good. So we've got, uh, if we wanted to put in here A, B, and C, A, B, and C, and our output here, if we want to throw this down, is that we're going to have 416 volts as our line voltage, three phase. And then our single phase voltage is going to be 240 volts on the phase out. So 208 in, 416, 240 volts out. Okay, we'll pause here in case you want to complete your diagram.